So the Sampul, the fly came and said, why don't we live for a while here, we'll die and we'll go. We'll live here, we'll go someplace else. So they all agreed, let's go do that. So before they could do that, the Creator had to go lead the way. So, the, so they got the Creator sick. The Creator stumbled, and his daughter was called the Hanya, or the Hantap, the frog. So the Creator slipped and touched his daughter right here. So she got angry at him, and she ate his feces. So he was getting ready to die. He taught the people the songs. And he was getting ready to go. All the animals were getting together. They said, what, would, what should we do with you? And the Creator said, you must cremate me. You must burn me. Send me back. Because our word for our soul is called a matau, the fire that burns within us. That's why when we say hauka, we say may that fire that's in you continue to glow brightly. It's, 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 it's a blessing. So, when the Creator was dying, he died. The coyote, or the hatapa, he wanted to be the next chief. He wanted to be the next leader. And he asked the owl, what should I do? And the owl said, if you eat the body of the Creator, you will become godlike. You'll get that power. There was greed in him. He wanted power. Have any of you ever known somebody like that? <laughs> he wants power. And he can't but anyway, so all the animals knew that the coyote was up to something. So they all got together. And they said, we're going to send the coyote on an errand. So they sent him first to the north to go bring back fire. In the meantime, they were getting the funeral fire ready. The goose came and started bossing everybody around. <coughs> do this, do that. Finally, all the animals said, shut up. But that's why the goose is the way the goose is today. <laughs> and then other animals started coming. They started talking. They were arguing. So finally the, the desert wren came. The bird came and said, let's do it like this. We're all going to put it together. They got the 28 pieces of wood, which today when, when people do cremate in the traditional way, it means that they're uh, sending that, uh, it's a house, building materials for a house sends that with them to the other side. So they got all that ready. And in the meantime, the coyote came back. He didn't trust her. They said, first go to the north. And they said, go to the west. Then go to the south. And the coyote kept coming back. So all these animals got together. Finally, they said, go to the east. And when the sun rises, you stick your tail in that, on the sun and bring that fire back. That's why the coyote has that fur. <laughs> so he ran over there. And in the meantime, they said, okay, we got the funeral pyre ready. How do we like this? They didn't know. So the blue fly came down and started spinning and made that spark. That's why when we use a stick in memory of the blue fly, it will start up. So when that happened, a frog, another frog, took a stick and hopped over to the funeral pyre and gave it to the halakwa, the lizard, and the lizard put that in there and started burning. So the coyote went to the sun, lit his tail, and started running back and started seeing the smoke. So he took off running faster and faster. And he said, this is, I want to see my father before, before he's completely gone. All the animals said, stay away. Coyote kept rushing four times. They kept pushing him away. The animals made a circle. So finally the coyote looked to see which one was the smaller one. That was the, the, the badger and the squirrel. He jumped over both of them. The only thing that was left in that funeral pyre was the heart. Grabbed the heart, took off into the mountains. And the blood from the heart became the red dirt that we have up here in the mountains that we used to make our clay pots, our sky, and other things like this. So this is part of our ceremony, this is part of our creation story. This, I'm giving you like the Kmart Blue Light special version. <laughs> <laughs> because in entirety, the creation story is actually told in six days. That's how much there is to it. So I've omitted quite a few things. Now, this was our territory, all the way up from Camp Pendleton, north of Camp Pendleton, all the way south of Ensmada, and from the ocean over here, all the way into the desert. There were Kumiai bands by Algodones. Even the, there was even a couple of bands in Sonora, and on the Colorado River. That's how far our territory was. We speak a human language, very similar to Kokopa, uh, Mojave, 
Kutzon or Yuma, uh, Walapai, Yavapai, Havasupai, Maricopa, and then in Baja, we speak uh, like the Paipais, Kiliwas, Kochimi, all those are human language people. So, this was our territory. This was all these things that we had. It was a village. Out here where Old Town is now, called Kosai. And what Kosai means is to dry it. So, you know, getting shellfish and things like that, you dry it. You dry it. And then Nipwai was right on the other side of the river. Our people are governed by our Shumuls, or our clans. The Shumuls that I belong to are the Neho, which is Dark Cloud, and U'u, or the Chusa, the Alpha. Those are our clans. And our clans are our families. Everybody that's a member of that clan is a family member. Any of you have like a big extended family? <laughs> what do your family say about dating your family members? Oh, that's your cousin. <laughs> that was a big thing. So if you ever go to Indian country, one of the first things they ask is, where are you from? And who's your family? It's not to be rude. We just want to know if you're, where are you from and who's your family? <laughs> because you might be related and then I'll treat you as a relative and if you're not, oh. <laughs> so, this is how it's been for, for thousands and thousands of years. We say we've always been here. Now, you all have houses, right? How many of you live in houses? <laughs> live in apartments? Okay. Some of you RV it sometimes? Okay. But it's your home, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's your home. So let me ask you this. What would you do if you went to the Globe Theater, watched the play and everything, and came home, and the doors open, and somebody's sitting in your recliner, watching TV, <laughs> wearing your underwear, and having a beer? <laughs> what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Gonna, you're gonna say, excuse me, uh, what you doing here? Okay, well, September 28th. 1542. Who dropped by in the neighborhood? Juan <laughs> Rodriguez Cabrillo. No relation. He <laughs> <laughs> came to San Diego. And you know what? I've seen some of the pageants that they've done where they had the reenactment and they come on a boat and they have these people dressed like Indians and they, they genuflect in front of him. <laughs> you think we really did that? <laughs> <laughs> This is when Juan, or John, discovered us, or discovered this land. You know, we have another word for it, invasion. Yes. He invaded our territory. And the thing was, they, they say it was to make, it was on a mission of discovery. It was on a mission to, you know, bring the West meets what, the New World. They came to San Diego, they came to the peninsula for the purpose of colonizing and using native people for slave labor and building it as a prelude to, to that colonization. Well, they, in, uh, you know, some of the people say that we thought they were gods. We did not think they were gods. One of the things that our people had was an extensive trade network. We already knew what was happening in Mexico because of trade. We knew that some invaders came in. White-skinned invaders came and overthrew a, a very powerful people. And they were, like, they were like a cancer. They were just coming and just taking whatever they wanted. And they would abuse and um, just, 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 just take everything. So our people already knew about this. Our people already knew. So when they came, we did not trust them. Our people carried our, our atim, our pawai, bows and arrows. Our people were, were very brave people. We were people that enjoyed our autonomy. All of our, all of our shamuls were autonomous of the other. Our chiefs were really an advisor. The way our people were, there are some chiefs that when they said, we're going to go to war, everybody in that village had to go to war.